Hello boys and girls and welcome to Kingdom Kids. We are so delighted that you're tuning in and watching us from week to week tell some of the stories of some of the kings of the Bible. Um, we're so glad that you're enjoying it and we hope that you enjoy doing all the crafts and activities and joining in with the songs and learning the memory verses. We hope that you're keeping well in these days as well because it's a difficult time for a lot of people. Well, I hope we are looking forward to Christmas too. And we're looking forward to the toy show on Friday. Continue to remember about pictures of your crafts or maybe of you doing your memory verses. We love seeing them. Well, today in Kingdom Kids, we have a new king on the throne. I wonder who it is. Well, the first clue about this new king is that he was only eight years old. Yes, eight years old when he came to be king. The second clue is that he did what was right. He always did what was right in the eyes of God. And the third clue is that this king found the book of the law of God that had been lost. So he was eight years old when he became king. He did what was right. And he found the lost book of the law of God. I wonder who he is. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your love and thank you for your grace and kindness. And thank you for the Bible. Help us to learn what you want us to learn so we can do what you want us to do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, here's our quiz for today. Um, so, uh, here's the options that Edgar's going to show you. All right. Okay, so first question. Um, what did Solomon ask God for? Was it A, wisdom? Was it B, money? Or was it C, par? Wisdom, money, par. The answer is wisdom. And the second question, ready? What is wisdom? What is wisdom? Is it A, to remember everything? Is it B, to be able to spell big words? Or is it C, to know what is right and what is wrong? Is it A, to be able to remember everything? B, to be able to spell big words? Or C, to know what is right and wrong? The answer is C, to know what is right and wrong. Question number three is about Ahab. What did you call Ahab's wife? What did you call Ahab's wife? Was it A, Jezebel, B, Sarah, or C, Blondie? Was it A, Jezebel, B, Sarah, or C, Blondie? And of course the answer is A, Jezebel. Ready for question number four? What did you call the prophet who battled against Ahab and the prophets of Baal? What did you call the prophet who battled against Ahab and the prophets of Baal? Was it A, Elisha, B, Elijah, or C, Samuel? Was it A, Elisha, B, Elijah, or C, Samuel? And the answer is B, Elijah. And the last question, what did Ahab steal from Naboth? What did Ahab steal from Naboth? Was it A, a donkey? Was it B, a vineyard? Or was it C, a house? Was it A, a donkey? 
B, a vineyard, or C, a house? And the answer is B, a vineyard. Do you get them all right? Yeah, I'm sure they did, didn't they? They've been all listening so hard and, and remembering so well. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the quiz. So let's do some more stories about a king. You want to know who the new king is? Okay, the new king we're going to learn about today, this king who came to the throne when he was only eight, imagine, but the same age as you, yep, became king when he was eight, and his name is Josiah. Josiah. Do you know anyone called Josiah? No. Let's tell you some things about Josiah. He, first of all, was a brilliant king. Not like Ahab. In fact, the exact opposite of Ahab, Josiah was going to be a brilliant king. But it was going to be a really tough job because things had got so bad. The people had forgotten all about God. The temple was really run down. Everything was a bit of a disaster because of kings like Ahab who had led the people away from God. So what was Josiah going to do? Let's get the first part of the story, and David's going to tell us that. Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 31 years. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and followed completely the ways of his father, David. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, he sent a very special message to Shaphan, the secretary, concerning the temple of the Lord. Go, take the money to Hilkiah the priest that's for repairing the temple and tell him to get to work restoring the house of the Lord. Yes, Your Majesty. Very good, Your Majesty. Right away, Your Majesty. So Shaphan headed off and met up with Hilkiah the priest, who had news for him. I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah the priest handed the book over to Shaphan the secretary, who took the book, opened it, and began to read. Shaphan soon realised that this needed to be shared with the king. Your Majesty, we have paid the money, we have uh, started work on the Temple of the Lord, and Your Majesty, Hilkiah the priest has found a book so Shaphan opened the book of the law of the Lord and in the presence of King Josiah began to read from these ancient words which had been rediscovered so recently in the temple of the Lord. The king was amazed and concerned at what he heard. He tore his robe and said, what are we to do? We have not kept the words of the law of the Lord, and now his anger burns against us. Go and inquire of the prophet and find out what we're to do next. We have not kept the law of the Lord. So they find this old book, the book of the law, um, the first part of the Bible they found. They hadn't um, heard anything from God. It had been so long since they, they read God's word that they had forgotten what God had said, what God required, what God wanted them to do. And so Josiah finds this book and he realises how many problems there are and how many uh, laws they've broken, how many commands they have broken, both him and all the people. And the question is, what can they do? What are they going to be able to do? And then God speaks, and he speaks through a prophet. A prophet is someone that God sends with a message to his people. And this prophet is called Huldah. 
So here is Hulda. I am Hulda, the prophet of the Lord. The Lord is going to bring disaster on this place and its people because they have forsaken the Lord and followed other gods and made idols from their own hands. The Lord, the God of Israel, is angry with the people of Judah because of this. Tell King Josiah, because your heart was humble when you heard what the law said, and because you tore your robes and cried in God's presence, he has heard you, and he will hold back some of his punishment for the people's sins. When Josiah heard all that the prophet Huldah had said, he called together all his elders to go to the temple of God, and all the people followed them. And there at the temple, from the least to the greatest, Josiah read the word of the law to them all. And when he had finished, he made a covenant to God to do as the book had said and to follow him with all his heart and all his soul. And all the people agreed that they would do the same. Then the people pulled down the idols and images of other gods in the temple and burned them up. And the king replaced the priests who were following other gods with priests who followed only our God. Josiah stopped the horrible practices and he smashed the altars of the other gods until they were all gone. <laughs> when Josiah had cleansed the land of all the foreign gods, he called a Passover, a special feast to remember God's goodness, as it was written in the law of of God. This was the first time in generations, that's many, many years, that this special meal was celebrated, where the people had finally returned to God and were giving him the worship that only he deserved. So God speaks through Hulda, and what does he say? Hulda says, God says you have to, to change your ways. You have to um, start doing everything that he says we should do. And he says you have to turn away from all the, the bad things. And you saw how Huldah uh, uh, told Josiah and then Josiah destroyed all the things and led the people to turn away from what was wrong and to choose to do what is right. He showed wisdom. All right. Yeah. So um, the Bible word for that, we talk about God wants us to repent. When we sin, God wants us to repent. We're going to show them what repent means, aren't we? Yeah. So what repent means is you turn around. See? God says, you're going the wrong direction. Look, you're, you're sinning and you've turned away from me. So I want you to repent. I want you to turn around and go the right way. That's what it means to repent. And it wasn't just Josiah and his people that needed to repent. God says that all of us are sinners. All of us need to repent at times. When I read God's word, I see things and I think, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't be saying that. I shouldn't be thinking that. And so I have to say, God, I'm sorry. And I'm going to turn around and I'm going to repent from that. And I'm not going to do it anymore. Instead, I'm going to choose to walk in your ways and I'm going to choose the things that are good and right. And I'm going to celebrate and rejoice in all your great love and kindness and mercy. And that's what the people did. They started celebrating this feast called the Passover. They hadn't celebrated that for a long time. Josiah, the great king, who hears God's word, who listens to God's word, who turns away from sin and leads the people in the right path. That was why Josiah, even at eight years old, 
made such a good king. Uh, what we're going to do now, um, uh, we usually have a song. So the song I thought we'd do this week is all about the Bible. It's uh, all about the, the books of the Bible. If you get your Bible and look inside, you'll see that there's lots of different books. It starts with Genesis and it ends with Revelation. And learning all those different books so you can find things in the Bible is an important thing to do. And this song helps you learn. So uh, you might take and listen to this a few times so you see if you can remember some of the books of the Bible. These are the books of the Bible. This Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Joel, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea. Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi. Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, and Hosea, Joel and Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. It's a letter from God that sets everyone free A gift for you, for me Okay, so we're coming towards the end of Kingdom Kids for this week. We normally finish with a craft. The craft's going to be, um, well, the, the craft we told you about last week. Isn't that right? We want to remind you of that. Remember, we were asking you to draw pictures and, and write messages so that we could send them all off to children in Asia, children who aren't allowed to meet because of bad leaders and bad kings and rulers. They're not allowed to follow Jesus. So um, if you want to finish your pictures this week, that would be great. We'd love to get them. Um, so you can send them to us here or we'll come and collect them from you and uh, we would love to have a big envelope that we can send off um, and we'll give you another week to do that and get them to us by uh, by next Sunday by the end of uh, November and uh, next so you can do that this week and then next week we're going to to do a new craft and Jean's going to tell you a bit about that just now. Hi boys and girls it's memory verse time but this week, it's memory verses. Oh, what does that mean? Well, instead of doing a new memory verse this week, we're going to recap on all the ones we've done already. And the reason we're doing that is next week, I'm going to be showing you a craft idea of how to help remember your memory verses. A wee bit of fun in it. So for next week's craft, I need each of you to get a container Something like this one here for the gravy. Your mums and have one in the kitchens, or maybe your granny will have one. But get one that has the wee dip 
in the lid because we need the bead dip in the lid for the craft, okay? So you can get them with the gravy or corn flour or some other container. So have a wee look in the kitchen cupboards to see if there is one there and if it's nearly empty. Okay, so we'll do that next week. Now we're going to do a recap on the memory verses. Does anybody remember what they are? Okay, boys and girls, everybody up on your feet. And here we go. We're going to recap our memory verses, which I know you all know off by heart. The Bible says in Revelations 4, verse 8, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The Bible says in Matthew 22, verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The Bible says in Revelation 7, verse 10, And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Now the next one I know we didn't really do as a memory verse but we did write it on our prayer boxes and the craft idea next week works better with four verses so we're going to put this one in as well so you probably all know it by now but here goes anyway. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 verse 6 Train up a child in the way they should go and when he is old he will not depart from it. We'll do that one one more time. The Bible says in Proverbs 22 verse 6, Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are old they will not depart from it. Now for the craft idea next week, as I said to you, we need these boxes, something like this, or maybe a Pringle or something, but if I have something with a dip in the lid it works better. Okay, so you also need a pen, paper, cello tip, Cello tip, pen, and paper, and the top. That's it. Okay, so see you all next week when we're going to do a new craft venture. Bye. Jean was testing your memory, wasn't she? She was making you think. And um, Jean's memory isn't that good because after she had did her part of the video, she uh, had forgotten to tell you you're going to need cling film as well and a small stone or a bead. Um, so she'd forgotten about those things. So remember with everyone else, a bit of cling film and uh, maybe a small stone or a bead you'll need for your craft next week as well. Hope you've really enjoyed learning about Josiah today and all about this wonderful God and his wonderful word. And we want to simply say bye and see you next week.